NVIDIA has recently launched the FrameView application. This is supposed to help with benchmarking your games and getting good performance results and seeing how well they're performing, as well as tracking power usage. Let's see how to install and how to run this application, what it does and its limitations. For installing, you can literally just go to the NVIDIA website, download it for free. It works for both AMD and NVIDIA cards, even if the power tracking is not as efficient on the AMD variants. Frame Viewer does not really have an installing. It's still in the beta phase, so this take it with a grain of salt. It's not completely developed yet. You'll just have to figure out basically which variant you need. In this case x64, you just need to go here, there's a re small readme file which uh, seems to be empty right now, but in any case you have to run install.cmd as administrator, I already did so I'm not going to do it right now, and then run the frame view 64. This will give you a very simplistic screen so far, shows where to where to place the overlay, I will put it at the, let's say, bottom right corner. Choose what you want to display, a few other settings, which button you need to press to start the recording, as well as where the logs are saved. So just keep this running and launch your game of choice. In this case, I am just, for the sake of testing, showing it on World of Warcraft. Uh, as you can see, my FPS are capped while it is in the background, that's why they are so low. But you can see here exactly what uh, frame view is showing you. It's giving you the watts that your graphics card is consuming, in this case 39 watts. It's not a very graphically demanding game, mind you, so it's not going to be super high. And as well as average FPS 30, um, 90, 95 and 99th percent percentile of the graphics, uh, the FPS that you are getting. Once I actually go in game, obviously the frames are going to go up a bit. It gives you, well, all these values that you had selected as well as the frames that are dropped. All this application does is basically show you those details handily on the screen as well as log it to a log file on the folder that you have required. A small critique I have to this program, while keeping in mind that it's still in beta state so it's not the final thing yet, is that it does not really um, give you an option of, of what window you want to actually benchmark. This means that I have the benchmark scene on window, on the WoW window that is, and if I go check on my recording software, I use OBS uh, for recording my videos, it will also have the frame rate of OBS here on the side as you can see. If I have Discord on, which I often do while gaming with friends, it will show the FPS overlay also on Discord window, which is not exactly ideal. You should be able to choose to have it just showing on the game window. You only have two choices of hotkeys, I have it on scroll lock right now, the other option is I believe F10. The game might use F10 for something, so I have it on scroll lock. When you press it, it just toggles it on and off, as well as enabling the recording for the logs that will go to the page or to the folder that you selected in the app settings. Something I have noticed is, even though I press scroll lock to hide it, after a while, usually a minute or two, it'll just pop back up, so it'll basically forget that you have turned it on and off, and it will just pop back up on the screen. I will not be flying around and doing so much stuff for so long until it actually happens, but I have encountered it while I was testing it previously, so that is possibly a bug that will be ironed out before the actual final release. As far as the presentation of the data that is collected by the logs, it is possible to use them to create charts like this, or you can just look at it while it's running to have an idea and well kind of note it down, although that's not very accurate, although from the home user perspective that you just want to see how it's doing and uh, how we, you know know how it's performing, it is enough. It's very simple and easy to run and install. However, for a benchmarking purpose like I might do or other tech reviewers might do, this type of charts would be ideal. However, the the frame view application does not give you these type of charts just like that this easily. You actually need to have some knowledge of how to create these charts, which I sadly right now I'm lacking, so I cannot really do it. What the frame application does do is it logs it all to whatever uh, folder you selected, then you can open it, and then you have the raw application of the data that is, well, basically unreadable, it is just a bunch of gibberish and numbers, so you cannot really uh, read it easily if you do not know how to trace the chart for it. It would be nice if it could just spit out the charts easily, 
Hopefully that's something that they will add up in the future. However, right now, uh, if you do not have the knowledge of how to create those charts, you are limited to just using it to, in the moment, check how it is performing. Another thing that I have also noticed, which I sincerely hope it is a bug, is that much like the overlay popping up even when you have disabled it, sometimes it is difficult to make it go away. And I actually had to restart my PC to lose that uh, overlay right there because I hit the application, I closed the executable file that is running in the background of the program window and I could not find any process running of it. I could not find its icon on the taskbar or anything of the sort, but the overlay just kept working and kept appearing and popping up. So hopefully that is something that gets fixed and improved in the future. How does this stack up with existing uh, benchmarking applications that most people are using? In this, at this point, people are mostly using MSI Afterburner with the Riva Tuner statistics running as well uh, in tandem with that program. It gives a lot more detail. You can choose exactly what you want to display and what you want to track. It gives you the logs, it draws you the graph immediately. So it is a lot better, although a lot more difficult to use. I will do a video about that and how to do it and how to set it up in the future when I have some time to do it because it does take some time. However, NVIDIA's application is a lot more lightweight, does not consume as much resources, so it has a lot of an impact on the benchmark results because your CP, uh, CPU mostly is not consuming uh, well, processing power to keep the application running and saving. So it does that have that improvement. It also tracks power usage, which is not very important for home users, but it is important for benchmarking and reviewing purposes. So for more uh, professional users, it is, well, a bit more advantageous. It is very easy to use and install. Like I said, there are several bugs and kinks that need to be ironed out. Although keep in mind, it's a beta version. It's not the final product yet. It will still see some improvements. So I am excited to see how that will come and if they will include most specifically some sort of chart drawing application for it so you can easily uh, draw some conclusions from your uh, well testing. MSI Afterburner also has the advantage that it allows you to track other things like CPU data, both temperatures and uh, use and each core, how much frequency it's running at, all that sort of thing. Well, NVIDIA's application is focused mostly just on the GPU, which is understandable because NVIDIA is a GPU manufacturer and not a CPU uh, company. So it is understandable, although for testing purposes, it's a, it's a lot more incomplete and you don't get as much data out of it as you can potentially get from Afterburner. It's also something that I could expand in the future. However, at this point with what we can see, uh, they are just focused on the GPU. What would I use right now if I needed to run some benchmarks? It depends. As a home user, to see how your GPU is doing, uh, frame view is a lot better, even in its currently flawed state. It's something that I would recommend if you are just curious and want to see how your video card is doing and what frames and how much power it's using. I would recommend it over Afterburn in that situation. As someone who sometimes runs benchmarks and needs more detailed data and easier to read, I would definitely uh, still stick to Afterburner. That might change in the future in whatever improvements they bring because Afterburner is a bit on the trickier side to set up and to make it run as you want to benchmark. So it is a bit flawed like that, but in general, it gives you a better picture, easier to read picture, and well, just more detailed statistics all around. Hopefully we'll see some improvements in frame view. Until then, I'll stick to Afterburner for now. I'll make a video about it in the near future, like I mentioned. In the meantime, uh, like and subscribe if you are enjoying the content. Otherwise, well, I'll have more videos up in the meantime, so uh, like and subscribe if you like those as well. Uh, this has been Attic PC Guy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have fun and enjoy.